the Australian Pace and Gold Gold Bullion final for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings, the Group 1 event finished in a ripper of a finish. And I'm joined by the delighted driver of RIP, Doug Hewitt. Well, Doug, congratulations. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about your wonderful comeback to harness racing. That's just topped it off very nicely with that performance by RIP. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's an unreal horse, and to be able to be uh, sitting behind him in these sort of races, it's an unreal feeling, and yeah, it's just really getting me back into the game. Doug, you had the perfect run throughout on the back of my ultimate Byron. Took you into the race nicely. Yeah, definitely. He's a, he's a beautiful horse, my ultimate Byron. He was always the best two-year-old last year, and he's taken that form into his three-year-old, and um, just worked out perfect. I could land his back and um, got the run at the top of the straight, so I couldn't ask for a better run for him. Doug, watching from the grandstands, you look to have a smile on your face like a Cheshire cat. How was you feeling at that particular stage? Yeah, he sort of over-raced the whole way through the race. Um, he settled for a couple of hundred down the back and um, it, it had me a little bit worried turning for home, but it, he still had that lap full of horse left and when the split came, he, he, he wanted to take the hole, which is always a promising sign and yeah, he, he couldn't have hit the line any better. They covered the last 426 eight still something in hand? Yeah, yeah, it took me another half a lap to pull him up. He sort of he's one of those horses, as I've said before, learning how to race and he felt super crossing the line and he, I honestly think he could have went a bit further. He, he's um, a very smart horse and I don't think we've found the bottom of him yet. Doug, remarkable story with this particular fella. As a two year old, he had a serious accident which you will explain to us now, but it's probably lucky to be here tonight. Yeah, definitely. As a two-year-old, just a paddock incident, um, gallop around fresh and went through the back of his tendon, went through 80% and the team at Central West Equine, Dave Searle and them, uh, they gave us a promise and so on, thinking that he'd be back to the races. We thought he was finished and um, nearly 12 months to the day he was back at the track and I uh, honestly didn't feel like he lost a bit, skipped a beat. He is ready to go and he's just proven it now. He just keeps putting it on the track. Doug, a wonderful team effort, but we've got to certainly heap a lot of praise on your dad, Bernie. Oh, definitely. Bernie and, and Wayne. Wayne's done a lot of work with him in the off-season when he was in the recovery position. And then Bern and the team at home, Jason, Jem and everyone, all the people that work there, they, they put on all this tireless effort and um, he's got him back to the track now. And my partner, Casey, she's sort of kept me up upbeat and just let me know where he was up to. And... Um, yeah, he's, he's taken us through the highs of harness racing at the moment. I noticed Casey hasn't let Rip out of her sight since the race. Nah, she wouldn't. Um, don't know who's favourite at the moment, me or the horse, but uh, Casey's always been there beside me and she's a, pretty much the main reason I'm always walking around with a smile on my face. So whatever Casey's around and the horses are going good like Rip, it's, it's always good to be part of this sport. Doug, he's now had seven starts, six wins and a, a placing. The Gold Chalice Group won also to his trophy cabinet, but now we can look forward to some exciting races. Around about 18 months' time, as was mentioned in the presentation by General Manager David Watson, a race by the name of the Eureka is going to be rolling around. Yeah, very exciting time in, in the sport of harness racing, but to have a horse like him that's pretty much just starting to hit his straps and knowing that's down the track, it, it helps you get out of bed every morning. But we've got a few races... Uh, to look at at the moment and um, the thing with him is we're in no rush if he shows any sign of um, that he's not up to it we're more than happy to give him as much time as he needs but um, hopefully we'll look at Queensland and then take it from there he's got the Vic Super Series at the end of the year and the Vic Derby so uh, being a Vic bred horse they're the main ones we'll aim at and given touch wood everything's going according to plan then the Eureka is a big one at the, the light at the end of the tunnel. What's on his agenda as far as Queensland is concerned? Uh, you've got the Queensland Derby and the South East Derby, uh, probably the main ones. Um, the Rise and Sun is an invitational race, so if he gets an invite into that, as like we said, we're not going to push him at all. If he's ready for it and he gets the invite, well, that'd be unreal. It's uh, great prize money and a great initiative by Queensland Racing, so uh, it would be very exciting to keep punching for these bigger races and while I've got him going so good, I don't see why not. Doug, just prior to us doing this interview, you're standing there looking at the honour roll for the Chariots of Fire. Doug Hewitt's name would fit very nicely on there. Yeah, uh, it, it would. Um, as I said, it's it's a horse. Um, he's a very special animal and races like that you sort of only dream of. I was in it with the Mustang um, last year and he went super, clock him 40 nine seven himself coming fourth or fifth and um 
it's always just a very special feeling to be a part of those races and knowing that you've got a horse like Rip that's just hitting his peak, it'd be unreal to target that as well. You just mentioned the fact that horses like this give you a reason to get out of bed. Around that Bathurst region, like all those country centres, it can get very, very chilly. I certainly would like to be in your shoes. But horses like Rip and the fact that you have now these $2 million races and all these other feature races just make it all worthwhile. Oh, definitely. It, they're the reason that everyone's in this game. They, they target these big races. It's always a dream for everyone. And I think a race like that's only going to encourage more people to get into the game. But... Um, yeah, definitely get, helps me spring out of bed. And as you said, those cold mornings are pretty tough, but um, he needs feeding, so I'll get there early and give it to him. Doug, I've noticed since the announcement that we're going to have the Eureka in September 23, there's been a different feeling come over the barn. There seems to be a lot of, a lot of trainers now with a spring in their step. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, it's, they're the things that are going to bring more people to this game. and um, It's going to bring a lot of turnover through punting as well. Like Everyone's starting to get a notice for it. You saw what... Um, the Everest done for gallops. It's brought in this whole younger generation and they, the racing's never looked better for them. So hopefully this race has the same feeling for us and hopefully we can pack out the stadiums and get them ready for a big race like that. No, congratulations to both you and Bernie and hopefully Rip, as you're predicting, is going to have a very bright future in a lot of these big races. Thank you very much.